Um, in this exercise, basically, I just wanted to go over some of the functionality in the ACAD for converting this. Actually, in exercise six, predecessor of this exercise, it actually goes through even more detail how to reverse engineer by importing images. But uh, th this is actually, there's going to be a couple steps to this, and I want to show you how basically you can come and reverse engineer a part, go from art to part in this case. Um, so this is a part that uh, was off of an old steam engine that dates back uh, many generations ago. And basically, uh, it's just there's a group of people trying to rebuild it. So they had the part, and they just wanted to see if they could go ahead and build it. So in, in ViaCAD, I thought I'd give it a shot. And uh, with some calipers, I ended up measuring it and uh, bringing it in. And also, I took a photograph of it and used that to generate this. Let me just go to the layers here and turn off the sheet and show you the model here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's not a super complex model, but um, nonetheless, it was a great little project for ViaCAD. And it's the 2D, 3D version 8. Uh, I ended up actually bringing in the photo. Here's a photograph of the original. And I overlaid it. And then I just started reverse engineering it from there, taking the geometry and the measurements, um, putting them together to model this part. And then I went ahead and created the drawing. And let me bring that up again. Just have it on a different layer there. Printed that out, and we use that for um, some engineering purposes. Anyhow, that's um, I just want to go through that, and then we went ahead and exported the part out. So you can actually go to File and Export, and there are several different translators here you could use. And the one that we ended up using for the particular machine we had available to us was the STL. STL stands for stereolithography, which was one of the earlier methods of rapid prototyping, which used the laser, uh, ultraviolet laser, and curable resin. Now, um, with the new machines out, they actually just have cartridges of uh, ABS plastic that you could just slide in, and it uh, melts the plastic in very fine little beads and layers it uh, on top of each other. And you'll see that in the next video. Um, but basically here, the STL, go with a binary file unless you need an ASCII. The binary is a smaller format. And hit OK. And then just select where you want to export it out to. And now you have some uh, ability to adjust the, the mesh. And here it gives you a preview. Uh, what it does is it breaks it down into a collection of triangles. And the finer the collection, the, the smoother the part's going to be. So, like, if you uh, adjust some of these, you could actually see the mesh being adjusted there. See, it's a very low polygon count there. And see, as you play with this, you can really update it. And it does come out to, uh, to look like that, actually. If there's lots of facets on that, like you see there are facets like a diamond, um, it comes out like it looks like a, kind of like a diamond-esque type of image. So there's a number of things you could do. The default's not too bad, but um, play with it so, so you get a, a nice good mesh in there. And um, then go ahead. In this case, uh, this is very fine here. And with today's computers, it's not that big of a deal to set it very fine so you get a nice image there. So there's some settings that could really help you there. 0.438 for surface deviation, normal deviation 4.5, edge length 0.096x, and aspect ratio 1.9. But um, there's also the default parameters. Which actually the default doesn't look too bad there. Okay. And then just hit OK. It exports the file out. And then you bring that into, in this case, um, if we're put into the dimension, actually the uprint, dimension uprint, and it's from uh, Stratasys Corporation. And basically, with the uprint, uh, it, they have their own software. It's called Catalyst that you would import it into, and then you could go ahead and set it up. It slices it into uh, multiple layers of like between 10 and 13 thousandths, and then you could go ahead and um, it automatically creates a support structure for you. It's a very nice software. So that's about it for this one. Uh, continue on to the next video.
Okay, uh, <clears throat> basically what I just want to go through here is here is a drawing that um, I had reverse engineered off of an old part for a steam engine that dates back uh, nearly a hundred years. Anyhow, in this case, uh, we ended up designing it via CAD, and that was the via CAD 2D, 3D version 8. Went ahead and uh, reverse engineered it, took some dimensions using calipers, and then um, built it up. Now, from that model, I was able to construct a rapid prototype off of a dimension, uh, actually a U-print, which is from a company called Stratasys. And the machine itself is right around th uh, $30,000, 25 to 30. Uh, now rapid prototype machines have gone down quite a bit in, in cost. Now it was actually made of um, ABS plastic. In this case it's like a black ABS. There's multiple colors you could choose from. But um, we built it up directly from the 3D model. We had actually scaled it because the intent is to use this for a casting. What I want to do is I want to finish this and remove this. If you look closely, there's some stair stepping that goes on there because what happens when the during the prototyping process, it just puts on little layers of the plastic at about uh, between 10 to 13 thousandths of an inch thick. And thus you create this, um, it's kind of a rough part to some extent, but yet uh, pretty impressive. So what I did is I went ahead and I, I have some automotive body filler that you could get from any auto automotive body place or a repair shop. And basically, I don't know, it's around $10, I think. And then you want to get the, um, the curing agent, too. It actually comes with it, usually. Anyhow, in this case, mine uh, broke open. And I ended up taking some of this and putting it on a sheet of paper, or actually cardboard, mix it up with a little bit of the, the paste, and it turns it hard after a while. Uh, depends on how much you add. If you add too much paste, it could get hard very quickly. Uh, if you don't add enough, it takes a long time for it to get hard. So what I did once I had that is I took a little like a rubber spatula. Like this actually was just a piece of rubber I got out of a, a base of a door jam type area. Um, and then this was actually like a scraper for a, a pan. And it's like a, a little plastic -y shape. But you could use pretty much anything that's uh, somewhat easy to, to bend. And I went ahead and I dipped it in and I just covered it in the Bondo. Now what I want to do here is actually just show you how to finish it. So the things that you want to have are your sandpaper. Um, in this case there's a couple different brands. But you want to start with a, a rather thick sandpaper, a grittier material. And then you just tear off a little piece. And then you just go through and you sand it. Now it's also good to wear uh, a safety mask and goggles for this just in case you don't want to get that powder in your eye. Or, or breathe in. And you sand it down. And you just continue to do that through the whole part. And then what we're going to do, once I get this sanded down, I'm going to go ahead and paint it. And then, uh, and then from there, I'll paint it with some primer, actually. Now here is a primer, you can see. Okay, this is a, um, it's a gray primer. Some of the different brands, there's a brand out, I think it's from Duplicolor, Dupli 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 I believe. And uh, we discovered that the brown primer was actually the thickest. Um, versus the gray was like a finer, and then the white was very fine. The black was somewhere in between the brown and the gray. So uh, depending upon which color you select, it seemed like some filled a little bit better. So if you want to fill some really heavy duty cracks, the, uh, the actual brown one seems to work a little bit better. Sanding block 
can help too if you just hit, find a little block of wood and put the wrap some paper around it. Helps it make it a little bit smoother. Also, a set of files can really help, but they do have a tendency to get clogged up pretty quick, so I try and keep them clean. But like for little corners, you can really get in there pretty, pretty decent. Now the trick is, is when you cover it with the Bondo, put a very thin coating on. Do not put a lot on because remember, the more you put on, the more you're going to have to sand. And you don't want to have to sand too much. Okay, now at this point, you can see I've sanded it down a bit, and uh, we're going to go ahead and put our first coat of primer on it. Now I'm only going to do one half, just so you can see the original and what it looks like, and then I'll go ahead and finish the other side as well. But it's really a matter of just getting off the excess bondo, smoothing it out until it feels pretty good. I'll use a brush here to get it cleaned off a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and paint it now with the, with the primer. Okay, now here you can see I just went ahead and I, I spray painted that area that I had finished. And you can still see there's some ridges in there and those could be hit again with some more Bondo and sand it down. The primer does assist in that a little bit. Um, it does fill. So um, some of those little, little ones you don't really have to worry about because uh, as you spray it again after you sand it the next time around, it's going to do a much nicer job. So you can see there's the original down at the bottom with the ridges. And how much more smooth out, smoothed out it is.